Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. In our fourth GarageBand video, I'll teach you how to use effects automation. Effects automation in GarageBand is achieved through automation lanes, which can be applied to any track. Any of the effects that you have applied to that track will expose their parameters to these automation lanes, so that you can change the effects parameters over time up here in the sequencer's timeline. Let me show you how to do that now. As you can see, I have a loop here called Glitchy Break 130PL already loaded up into GarageBand, and this came from our Breakbeat Electronica pack. Here it is on Modified. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is loop this up. So I'll just click on it, hit the loop button down here, and adjust the looping region accordingly. And now this will play back looped. So now that we have a sample loaded up with two bars of beats, Let's load up some effects on this track so that we can automate them later. You'll remember from our previous video that you can load up effects just by hitting the I button here and then coming down to the Details tab here. Once you do that, you've exposed your effects. Echo and Reverb are both really good candidates for automation, so we'll leave those engaged. And I'll choose two more effects that we can automate as well. For the first one, let's go with the AU Filter, which is an audio unit that I have loaded onto my computer. And then for the second one, I'll go with another audio unit effect, Distortion. Now I'm going to close this track info view for now, and then I'll come back over here to our track view. Now to expose the automation lane for these effects, you simply come over and click on this little triangle here, and that will expose all track automation. As you can see, by default it loads up track volume to be automated, although when you click on the drop down, you can go to Add Automation, which brings up a further interface that allows you to modify any of the effects that you have engaged on the track. And as you can see here, all four of the effects that we have enabled are available, and any of their parameters are open for automation. So for AU Filter, let's go with Low Filter Frequency, and then for the Distortion, let's go with Decimation. I'll leave the Visual EQ alone for now, I don't want to automate that. And then over on Echo and Reverb, I want to be able to automate both of those. I'll hit OK. And now any of those parameters that I've chosen are exposed here. And of course I can choose whatever automation I want to access here just by choosing the particular tracks automation here. Now that you've seen where to access the track automation, let's go back over here to the effects view and we'll take a look at the filter. You can see that we have three custom definable bands in the middle as well as a high and a low band that are both set to shelving types. What low shelf means is that anything below the low frequency will be adjusted by whatever your low gain is set to. Since I already have the low frequency set to be automated, I want it so that any frequency I choose here will be reduced in volume by 18 decibels, so I've brought the parameter all the way down. If I play back the loop, you can see what effect this has as I change the low frequency. So that's a really useful effect to have in order to change up some of the frequency content over time. So I'll close this and I'll leave low frequency at 10 by default so that it's only cutting out lows that are completely inaudible in the track. And then let's create some automation. Now what I'd like to do is change the low frequency setting right here at the last few hits of the loop in order to take out all of the low frequencies and just leave the higher ones in there. All you have to do to create this effects automation is simply click on the automation line here and it'll create breakpoints. I want the frequency to go up quite a bit right here, and then abruptly come back down right at the end of the loop, so that only a few of these hits are affected. There we go. That little bit of automation changed up the feel of the loop a lot, so let's keep working on that little part of the track right there. I'll come back over here to our chooser, and now I'll come down to the reverb. Now I want the reverb level to increase right when the low frequencies drop out at these last two hits, so I'm going to set up a similar bit of automation here. I'll bring these up just a little bit more so we can get a lot of reverb. Now I want this drum beat to play again, and I want to manipulate it in a different way. So what I'll do is just click on it, I'll copy it, drag the cursor over here, 
and then paste it again. I'll increase the looping region, and now I'll add some automation for the delay unit. So I'll come up here to echo, and I want this particular kick drum right here to be echoed. So I'll set up the automation again, just clicking and drawing automation lines. Sounds pretty good. Let's add a little bit of decimation automation as well. So I've chosen decimation over here, and I'll add a little bit of automation right here at the end of this second loop. I'll start high and have it gradually decrease till the end of the loop. That sounds pretty cool, although I think I want to bring that level up even higher. Let's try that out. I really like the way that sounded, so I'll add a similar little turnaround right here at the end of the first couple bars. Let's see what that sounds like. So as you can see, over very little time, we've added lots of modulation to this one loop and really changed it up over a four bar playback period. Now that we have some modulation in place here, the last effect I want to enable on this track is the gate. I'm going to leave this on all the time, and in fact it's not possible to automate it in GarageBand. However, I really enjoy using this effect as a great way to make a drum loop more staccato and choppy. Check it out. Here it is without the gate, and here it is with the gate. Listening back to this loop, the one change that I want to make is to go back to the reverb and reduce the level of reverb send right here at the end of this first turnaround. So I'll just bring these little points down a bit drag them down from 55 to say around 34 and see how that sounds. Now I want to leave you with a couple of really helpful tips here for automation in GarageBand. The first thing to notice is that you can adjust all of the points on a track at one time if you want to. Just click on the track here and then drag any of the points around. And as you can see all of them come up and down uniformly. Another handy tip is that if you hold down shift while you're manipulating a control point, it actually moves in smaller increments than when you just normally click and drag it. That way you can do more precision work if you have a specific value in mind. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!